الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, given us the, the solution for all our problems in the Quran al-Kareem, including the problem of addiction. <coughs> um, but God's method is, is a gradual method. That if somebody is accustomed to something, you cannot stop him at once. It has to be a gradual process. <clears throat> An example of that is alcohol. Um, Islam did not forbid alcohol at once, it went through three stages. Um, the first one came in Baqara. Where God says, "Yes, Aluna ka an al khamr wal maisir." Qul fihi ma ithm al kabir, wa manafi ul nas, wa ithmuhuma akbar min nafaihima. He says that they are asking you, and they are asking the Prophet, peace be on him, about uh, wine, alcohol. And gambling. They are both addiction, bad addictions. <clears throat> Tell them there is a great deal of sin in it. Yet there are benefits in it for people. But their their harm exceed, exceeds their benefit. So this is where the Quran stopped at this first day. So he presented the matter, the case to people to use their judgment, their reason. If you have something that has benefit and harm, but the, the harm outweighs the benefit. So if you are a rational being, a thinking human being, you will, you will, you will quit, you will leave it. Because the harm, the harm there's more harm than, than, than benefit. <clears throat> and the benefit that he's talking about here is not a tangible benefit in the sense that benefit because you will make money out of it. Benefit because it gives people a temporary consolation. Uh, so, and satisfaction, even though it's temporary. So that's, that's kind of benefit. <clears throat> then, when this came, some companions decided to quit drinking. Some. But the majority continued to drink. Then, after a while, again, Allah revisited the subject again. This time He said, "Ya ayuha al-ladina aman, la taqrabu salata, wa antum sukara hatta taalamu ma taqulu." All you who believe, is addressing the, the community of the believers in Medina, all you who believe, don't come close to prayer, don't come near prayer when you are in a drunken state. So this, Allah is the best doctor <clears throat> and knows the, the, the human nafs because it all comes back to the nafs. The attachment of the nafs to things that uh, of uh, nafs, quick but temporary but transient pleasures. Inna nafs la amara bisu illa ma rahma rabbi. That nafs always chooses uh, what is now, even though in the long run is harmful. <clears throat> so this time, Allah said to them, "Okay, I'm not saying you don't drink, but." Don't drink when it's prayer time. How many times do you pray in the day? Five times. 
So if you have to, if you have to come to prayer in a sober state, that means you have to bring at least a few hours before prayer time. So that that definitely will cut down your the hours you have for drinking, maybe to one third of the day. So because of that that check Allah has put in place now, it says stop drinking. But he said don't drink until you are sober. Uh, don't drink, uh, don't come to prayer until you are sober. And you have to pray, it's obligatory. So then that means you have to stop drinking a long time before prayer time. If the is 12 o'clock, you stop drinking around 9 o'clock. Well, I, don't, I don't know how much it takes for somebody to be fully sober after drunkenness. So because of this, I as well, many quit drinking. Many of them, because now it becomes almost impossible to drink. You know, if you have to drink and be sober before the prayer time. Yet, some persisted. They continue to drink. So thirdly, the final injunction came. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amam. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَارُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجِسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ All you who believe alcohol, gambling, lottery are all Ridges, I mean, are all abominations from shaitan. Stay away from it, and you will succeed in your life. Then this was a final uh, prohibition from Allah, and wine became prohibited at once. So everybody quit drinking. But it, it gave them time to recover. It gave them time to think about it. He gave them time to work on it. Because addiction is addiction. It cannot stop one day. So it's a, over a period of years, from the first ayah to this one, it took a few years. So he gave them time to, to help themselves out of this habit. And by then, I think they were ready. They had cut down, cut down, cut down, cut down. Until he came to the last bit. Allah said, even that, cut it out. And they all quit drinking with no problem. And Sayyidina Aisha, she said that, had Allah said to them from the first time, don't drink, they won't stop drinking. They all refused to stop drinking. He said, well, Allah gradually bring them slowly, slowly, until they were convinced that drinking is bad. So the same thing goes for drugs and other forms of addiction. We have to deal with it with lots of mercy. Those who have fallen into this condition, it wasn't, maybe they didn't think it's going to turn out this way. But they found themselves trapped in a habit that they can't quit. Or their willpower has become weaker than their addiction. They do want to get out. But they, don't, they like the willpower to, 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 to get out. So somebody has to help them. But this has to be over gradually in that way. So um, I think that we should, and it's, it's our community's responsibility and our leaders, but I think it takes a person who is a good, um, a good teacher person who knows how to uh, deal with the nafs of a human being, uh, human being psychology, to be able to help a person to strengthen his, his willpower, to overcome his desires and have self-control. And uh, I think uh, one of the things that's recommendable, I think I just say in the time so, is, is um, Fasting, for example.
Fasting is a very effective mean of living habits. If you smoke, you can quit smoking. I have seen that many people. Ramadan, they, start, they, they, they quit smoking. And it's not because, uh, just because of fasting, but because it's Ramadan. You can see that when you fast in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan is different. In Ramadan it's easier for you to fast because Allah is helping you, particularly, in that, because of the time. So if, 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 if Ramadan comes in and somebody has this kind of addiction, the community can give him a kind of a support. Bring them into a mosque, keep them there, and take care of them. Day after day, day after day, maybe by the end of Ramadan, they will have quit. And sustain them, because habits are very hard to forget. So until they completely forget that habit, and never relapse back into it. Should we stop for prayer? Inshallah, so, maybe after prayer.